Hey folks, my name is Mo Amir and this is Van Color, British Columbia's bonafide culture and politics TV talk show. We have a fun show for you tonight. I will thoroughly embarrass myself and I promise you that you won't want to miss it. But first, do you experience vivid, maybe recurring dreams? I do, and being 10 years removed from grad school, 20 years removed from high school, I want to find out why I keep dreaming about being unprepared for a school exam. Do you have that one too? Here to explain the theater of our slumber is the author of A Clinician's Guide to Dream Therapy. She's a registered clinical counselor, therapist, and an expert of trauma-related nightmares based out of Salt Spring Island. She is Dr. Leslie Ellis. Dr. Ellis, thanks for being on the show tonight. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. So first things first, why do we dream? When we sleep, why do we have these images in our head? So it's a million dollar question. Um, nobody actually knows for sure, which okay. is, makes it really interesting. But there's there are a lot of theories. And I think the most uh, prevalent theory is that dreaming is doing some kind of emotional regulation while we sleep. So if we're stirred up about something, we tend to dream about it. Mm. And it uh, it takes the emotion, it takes the charge out of it. And it also maybe uh, helps us with memory consolidation. So when we have a million things go by during the day, what happens is um, something has to choose what we're going to remember and then lay it down in, in our in our mind somehow so we can retrieve it. And dreaming seems to be implicated in that. But it's really hard to study dreaming because you're <laughs> asleep and you can't really report on it yeah. directly. You can only so, sort of talk about it after the fact. And our, right. and, our, and our reports about our dreams are unreliable because we only catch pieces of it. So these are ideas. And um, what I like is that nobody really knows for sure. There's some people that suggest it's a rehearsal, a practice for um, for practicing social situations or threatening situations. We get to try something out, like a, a form of virtual reality in our sleep. Right. Um, that's another pretty good theory. And so do dreams tell us about our emotional state or what can we learn from our dreams or nightmares? We can learn what's most uh, up for us. Yes, they'll, they'll pick up on the most intense emotions that we're experiencing. Even if we're not completely aware that something's really got a rise out of us, our dreams will pick up that emotion mm -hmm. and they'll give, us a, they'll give us a picture of it. So in dreaming, our, our mind is in a different state than when we're waking, but it's really active. It's actually in some, some parts of our brain are more active when we're dreaming than, we're, uh, than when we're awake our emotional center, our limbic system, our visual cortex, those are both more switched on. And so hmm. we get basically pictures of our feelings. Yeah. And that's, so dreams are, are, they can be seen as metaphors for our feelings. And they pick up on the things that are the most, um, the most up for us. If yeah. we dream, does that mean we're having a restful sleep or is it maybe a restless sleep if we're dreaming. So we dream about two hours every night. Okay. And so it's part of our natural sleep cycle. It doesn't mean one thing or another. I think if we're uh, more, the lighter you sleep, the more likely you are to remember your dreams. Oh, okay. But everybody dreams, you know, 90 to 100 minutes a, a night. More toward morning. We, ha we have like a expanding cycles of REM throughout the night. And but we all dream. I know a lot of people will say, well, I, I don't dream, but it's just that you don't remember them. And you're probably a deeper sleeper if you don't remember. So when you say um, more towards the morning, is that why when I wake up, it's you know, it is morning most of the times. So obviously, sometimes if I'm dreaming, I'll wake up in the middle of the night. But a lot yeah. of times it's like I'm supposed to be getting up anyways. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a, the longest period of REM is right before you wake up. Oh, okay. So that's the best time to actually catch your dreams is when you first wake up. Yeah. Because there will be dreaming happening right at the at the end of your sleep cycle. And at the beginning of your sleep cycle, you tend to go into a deep sleep that's the non-REM sleep. So there's sort of some rudimentary dreaming, but the most interesting dreams happen later, second half of, of the night. Right. Yeah. We have to get into this recurring dream that I have, and it ha it has several different uh, interpretations or iterations, I should say. But ultimately, I keep having this dream, and I wouldn't say, I, I would say I have it every few months or so. Mm -hmm. It's not like every week or anything. But I have this dream where I show up at school, and I realize that I'm in a class that either I've just not been going to or I have been going to, but not, you know, taking seriously. And suddenly it's the day of like the final exam and I'm only learning about it now and I'm completely unprepared. Why do I keep having this dream? 
So this is one of the most common anxiety oh, dreams. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, anxiety yeah. dreams. Okay, here we go. Well, <laughs> it, you know what? It, it isn't um, necessarily the same um, for everybody. What um, what the um, it's you've got a, a anxiety or a feeling of not being prepared. And so your dream is picturing a sense of that. Mm. And so they probably come up when there's something in your life that you're feeling like I, I didn't quite, you know, I'm not quite ready. I didn't quite get, um, you know, all my ducks in a row. And the dreaming, it often picks high school because it, it'll go back to a, a time where that feeling was really um, intense. And oh, okay. high school is kind of, I think, the the sort of a place where a lot of our dreams visit just because uh, our emotions are really intense and it picks up things that seem similar, feel similar. And so it'll put you in high school. It'll put you, maybe you won't even have, you know, some people are on a stage, they're naked, they haven't got their <laughs> lines. It's like, it, but versions of this dream yeah. uh, happen to everybody. And uh, it's, if you think about when it's happening and what you've got coming up, you might find that there's some, uh, something related to feeling unprepared. So it sounds like in those teenage formative years, there seems to be almost like an emotional imprinting that I guess becomes a point of reference because hmm. my first intuition would be like, okay, if I'm anxious about something, why aren't I just dreaming about that thing? Why am I going back to like high school memories, right? Yeah. So the idea of um, dreaming being a, a place, a, 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 a sort of a process of laying down memories means that they pick up on things that have an emotional charge and put them into a network where uh, things have a similar feeling. Mm -hmm. And so it will, that's why dreams have this weird mix of time and, and places. So it'll be anything that you feel unprepared for, anxious about, it'll find the places in your life that where you felt that most. And yeah. adolescence, of course, <laughs> is when we are often feeling like a lot of intense emotion. So it'll loop mm. that in so that um, it'll kind of like, it puts our memories into an associative web or a link with other related memories. That's one idea. Right. And so you can, when you're in that mode, the memories related to that are all available to you is the idea. And so are nightmares kind of always tied to either anxiety or trauma? Like what is the purpose of nightmares of, of having unpleasant <laughs> dreams when you're supposed to be resting? Yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, the idea that dreams are trying to take the charge out of, of uh, difficult experiences applies to nightmares as well. Mm. And if you have a lot of difficult experiences, I think there lo a lot of nightmares are trauma related. And it's your it's your um, your dreaming body is trying to uh, dissipate the charge by uh, having an experience of it that then you can metabolize. But when um, the dreams are too intense, you wake up in the middle of them. That's kind of what defines a nightmare. And then the dream doesn't actually do its job. So you end up having this dream again and oh. again because it's it's just repeating this um, a attempt basically to dissipate the charge, but it's not succeeding. See, I thought I was having recurring dreams because I'm just unimaginative. <laughs> <laughs> No? no. Okay. <laughs> no. No. Dr. Alice, this was a pleasure. Thank you so much for teaching me so much about dreams and and my recurring school dream. Oh, you're welcome. Appreciate it's your been time a tonight. pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah. Folks, if you want to learn more, pick up her book, A Clinician's Guide to Dream Therapy, or find her online as she offers both online courses for clinicians and the general public alike. She is dream expert Dr. Leslie Ellis. Now, after some business, do you still have creative writing from when you were a teenager? Have you ever dared to read it? Would you ever recite that angsty teenage poetry in front of an audience? Well, our next guest is a pioneer in making that dream a reality. Sarah Bino of Teen Angst Night is up next. <laughs>